Hey everybody, it's Barton Holmes with Holmes and Owen Yacht Sales in Yamaha Marine Center. I thought I would do a video for you guys this afternoon discussing hull design. Um, this will be kind of geared toward people who are new to boating, see all these different boats, all these different styles, and what does it all mean? There are a bunch of terms people use for uh, regarding the bottom of the boat. I thought I'd review some of these today, so maybe it will help you uh, to make the right decision, the right buying decision when you're looking for your next boat and you'll understand uh, a little bit more about why boats are, boat hulls are designed the way they are. Um, let's go through some terms first. Um, so the front of the boat, up there, up there, the front of the boat's the bow, the rear of the boat's the stern, the left hand side of the boat is port, the right hand side of the boat is starboard. And the reason that you don't call it the right side and the left side of a boat is depending on which way you're facing, you might get confused. So if you say port when you're on a boat, it's always a particular side of the boat. Not the side that you're facing or not facing. The port is the left hand side of the boat, no matter whether you're facing forward or aft. And that's the reason that they come up with slightly different terms. So there's hopefully less confusion once you once you learn the terms. Um, another term, freeboard. Uh, freeboard is the is the amount of hull side you have. Um, this would be freeboard from the rub rail down to the chine. Um, this is the side of the boat, basically the amount of freeboard you have um, would be the height of the hull side. So this is a s true center console, offshore type of boat, so you've got a fairly tall hull side. Go next door to this, this is a Parker, this boat on the left is a Parker. This boat here is a Creval, it's a hybrid, it's a bay boat, center console, but it's freeboard is much shorter here. Uh, this actually has a fairly tall freeboard for a bay boat. You can see this the shear line, which is this line here where the rubber rail goes up. You can see the this um, this sweep in the shear and it, it, it breaks and uh, goes a little bit higher going forward, which makes this bay boat a bit more appropriate to go offshore. Um, real bays that have lower freeboard it becomes a little bit dicey going offshore in a boat like that um, because you might ultimately ultimately find conditions are so rough that it might not be safe um, so you just have to be careful um, some other terms um, running uh, regarding other terms um, up here in the bow of the boat um, we'll look at a couple of things one is the chine the chine is where you have the hull side, where you have the hull side coming uh, together with the bottom. This is the chine. As you can see, there's a flat part, of, flat part on the bottom of the chine. Um, generally, if you look down that chine, generally you want that chine to turn downward so that when the spray comes up and hits the chine, it gets deflected down. So they call that a reverse to the chine. Um, so virtually every boat that's going to be a, a, a mono hull boat, a a boat of conventional design will have that sort of chine on the boat. The other is the running strakes. These are running strakes. These um, protrusions on the bottom of the, the boat are running strakes. So as the water comes up the boat, it hits this and gets diverted down. So what you're trying to do is to prevent the spray from getting over onto the boat when it gets windy. Um, by having these running straights, it gives lifts to the bow. It uh, also diverts spray away from the bow. If you didn't have these up here, this water would, would shoot up the side of the boat, hit the chine, get thrown up in the air, and would ultimately make the boat a lot wetter. So ideally, you want to see two running strakes. Not all boats will have that. Next door in the Parker, you'll have one running strake. So it just depends on the hull design and what they think is necessary to make it a dry running boat. As you can see, this has a similar chine here, um, but only a single running streak. All right, so let's talk about the actual hull design. So I'm going to focus this on conventional mono hull boats, um, not catamarans, not boats with stepped hulls. We won't get any, anything complicated like that. Um, we'll just talk about conventional mono hull boats, which is what everything is here that we have. So in that, um, you've got two different designs. You've got a modified V and you've got a deep V. 
traditionally the way I've been taught, a deep V is anything roughly 21 degrees and up to 24 degrees. Generally, the maximum dead rise is 24 degrees. So when we talk about dead rise, what we're talking about is this angle here at the transom. So anytime you hear somebody talking about dead rise, it's virtually always at the transom. So it's the amount of V you have in the bottom. This is a 14 degree V, I believe, on the Parker, so it's relatively flat. Um, means the boat is easily propelled, gets on a plane quickly, very, um, very easy boat to move through the water. The more the V, the, the, the steeper this angle, the more power it takes to run the boat. Um, the advantage of this is it's very stable when you're running, it feels very stable when you're stopped and you're fishing, uh, doing water sports, it has a very stable feel, the boat doesn't roll that much. Um, with the center, with a deep V boat, the more the V, the more it tends to, um, the more rocking motion you can tend to get, rolling motion I should say, especially when you're um, sitting, maybe bottom fishing, the boat will tend to roll more. Um, but in rough conditions, that deeper V makes for a much smoother ride. So you've got that design. You come over here, this is this bay boat, the Creval. So this is a 17 degree dead rise. A um, little bit more V um, than you're seeing on that Parker. You also have this um, cutout in the transom area here. Uh, this is mainly um, for draft issues. Um, in these bay boats, you're getting on plane potentially in very shallow water. By having this cutaway here, um, it allows you to draw less water getting on a plane. You'll also notice there's a flat area right at the bottom there underneath the drain plug. That area extends forward, also helps give lift to the boat, get the boat on the plane more quickly in shallow water, so you're much less likely to get the lower unit stuck in sand and mud and things. And also, by having this cutaway, it allows them to potentially run the engine at a higher position when the water leaves the transom. For about every foot that uh, you're coming back, the water starts rising about an inch or so. Um, so you're, when you get the engine this far back, you're able to run the engine higher, it draws less water, and you actually get better performance. Um, so, and that's a similar... It, it, well, it, it's something similar to what race boats do. They, um, uh, they tend to run engines that are set back from the running surface a fair distance in order for them to run in cleaner water and at a higher, uh, a, a higher angle or um, a higher position setting on the motor itself. All right, so let's move over to the Key West. So this is a 20, excuse me, this is an 18 Key West. This is running at about 20 degrees of dead rise. So you got a little more dead rise. You know, very typical bottom configuration on this boat. Um, very smooth running, very easy to propel. Um, just a very good all-around boat. You see back here in this chine, you can really get a sense of the reverse in this chine. It comes down and then angles down this way, throwing the spray down before it goes out. Very important. Let's move over to this regulator. This is a regulator bay boat. You, say, you see it has a very similar cutout to what you're seeing in the Creval. This is a bay, um, so they're, they're getting a similar stern design. And then let's move over to the Pursuit. This is the 288 Pursuit. This is a full 24, 24 degree dead rise. You can see how much V there is in the bottom here. Um, tremendous amount of V. Fantastic rough water ride. Um, it really is a, um, an exceptional performance. You will tend to find that boats with this much V will uh, rock and roll a little bit more when you're, when you're static in the water. Um, there's a little bit more movement there, but it's um, sort of, everything's a trade-off in a boat. And that trade-off for rough water performance is um, a little bit more rocking motion in the boat. Well, I hope uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll do more educational videos on different things that I think that might be of interest to you guys. And uh, I appreciate you watching and have a great day.